Oh, it is right on the hour. So I say we go ahead and get started. Um, Hello everyone, my name is Morgan. I'm an Aspen Implementation Specialist at Biowater Solutions. Um, most of you are familiar faces at this point, but if you're joining us for the first time or if you don't usually attend, welcome. We're so happy that you're here. Um, so if you wanna follow along with today's agenda, um, you can click that link in the chat. Um, and of course, if you have questions or wanna add something to agenda, um, just let us know in the chat or, or speak up. Um, but this is our main session for today. And at the end, we usually have time for extra discussion and questions to come up. So um, before we move on to some other topics today, um, I wanted to quickly introduce some new members of our team. Um, so we have with us uh, Kendra Little. She is a new hire on our systems team at Bywater, and she's actually going to be um, doing kind of both stuff on the Koha side and the Aspen side. So. I'll turn it to you, Kendra, if you want to just say hi. <laughs> yes, hello, everybody. It's great to meet you all. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to start working with you all. I am currently based in D.C., and I am ready to work. Excited to be here. Yeah, thank you. Um, and then we also have um, Elise, who is um, our new partner engagement specialist. So she is taking the torch from Cal, and uh, we are also super excited <laughs> for her to be on the team. So... Yo, nice to meet everybody. All right. Uh, awesome. So yeah, if you see them in tickets or if you see them in videos or wherever, just say hello. Um, all right. And speaking of Cal, I'm going to turn it over to her so she can talk about PLA. Hi, everyone. Um, I just wanted to talk about we have um, many of our partners in the Aspen community are going to be doing a presentation or a panel discussion on Monday. Um, March the 7th and it is I'm in Eastern so it's 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern and then the I think everyone that's presenting is pretty much based in mountain time so it's 1 to 3 percent 3 p.m. mountain time um, the information is in the notes and it's going to be presented on YouTube live but basically this is just a PLA virtual kickoff event um, we're just gearing up for uh, the conference our first in in person national conference in two years so we are just very excited about it um, but there's two different partner sessions um, the open source community crisis response so we have a couple of our partners talking about you know how they responded in crisis and um, some familiar faces you'll see Sam and Bob and Tara are going to be talking about this community and how over the last few years, um, we've all kind of just like built this open source community together. Uh, many of us never meeting in person um, and we've formed friendships and we've created workflows and all kinds of things. So I'm super excited, of course, to, to hear what they have to say about that. Um, and thank you, Jesse. She put the um, kickoff link in there and we hope that you guys will attend. Um, speaking of PLI also, uh, next week, I was thinking of doing, or we were thinking of doing an Aspen Weekly on just showing off some of our public libraries. Um, so I wanted to kind of gather feedback and I'll post this in Slack, but I'd love to feature your libraries um, and the unique ways that you're using Aspen Discovery. So if, if everyone or anyone would be willing to um, contribute and just share some of the things that you've built or the tools that you're using in Aspen, we'd love to include you in our like special um, PLA edition. So I'll post more about that after this in Slack. That's all. Thanks, Al. Um, yeah, just looking at the names that are there at those, um, I, I, all those people are so awesome. So if you don't already know them, you should check it out because they're amazing, awesome librarians. Um, next, we are going to go to Jordan, who's going to give us our priority and planning review. All right, there is a link to a PDF of this slideshow um, within the within the agenda, so you can follow along if we, if we go a little bit too quickly for you. Uh, but this is just where we take a look at what our plan was for this release, how kind of how well we met our plan, where we had to adjust. Um, and we were pretty happy with how this release came out. Um, a lot of this is what Mark just talked about. We were able to finish up Evergreen as planned, um, do a couple of other things um, to help with what some of one of our symphony libraries, partner priorities, that whole prioritization thing uh, that Mark was showing off. This is 
was and is going to continue to be a focus for us, making sure that we're taking care of the top things that are important to you. So you will pretty much always see partner priorities on this list um, when we got a good amount of that done this time. Uh, next are the LIDA items that we said we would do and those got done, which is fantastic. We put LibCal integration as a stretch goal and I'm happy to report that we're working on it and we are currently planning to finish that this release. So if you use LibCal, I'll look forward to the next Aspen Gathering when we can um, Hopefully we'll get that done and we'll be able to show that off. We have been talking, I probably should have switched the next two if we're looking at the one on the right on the working on it. Uh, we've been continuing our work on facets, record grouping, search updates. You saw a lot of the search updates that, that Mark did and I think we'll probably have a few more of those this time. Last time we talked about the adjustments that we wanted to make to facets. Uh, the big things we wanted to do here was to make facets searchable because right now we are only showing the top 100 results. And then we also wanted to find a way to exclude things from facets. So to say, don't show me things from this author if I'm adjusting the author facet. Uh, we are working on designs for that. We have some, um, I'm really excited about these designs. I wish I could show them to you. They're not quite ready yet. We wanna do some usability on them. Uh, but we have a couple things in the works, so um, you can look forward to that, but we do have first drafts of those designs um, that we'll be able to um, hopefully share at the next Aspen gathering. Uh, I meant uh, planning for e-commerce additions and enhancements. We are going to kind of break this up into chunks. We are ready to take on um, to start working on our first integrations, and I have another slide I'm talking about what we're doing first in terms of all of the e-commerce um, tickets that you have in or requests that you have in. So I'll, I'll save that for the slide that has, or for the slide that has that. Um, and then finally, something we added is design updates for my account and navigation. Uh, we do have a slide on this too, and I'll talk more about that um, when we get there. Okay, so uh, what we are doing next time, again, just for reference, that same plan is on the left that we just looked at, and this is what we have planned for the next release. Uh, the e-commerce updates, LibCal integration, um, finishing that up, side load fixes. These are things that are, you're probably not seeing these, but they are very painful for our staff in terms of fixing problems. This is just gonna show up as an error for you. And you're like, what is this error gonna be? It's just a weird thing, some weird things related to side loads that we wanna fix on our side. Account menu consolidation. This is related to the design things that um, I mentioned and we'll be talking about in a minute. Uh, I'll talk about them later. I just get so excited. I wanna talk about them now, but plan the slides so that we could we could look at them point by point. Um, and the design facets, um, updates and fixes we already talked about. As far as facets, um, and as well as to support some of the search work, we want to start to gather I'm some statistics. You when you're trying to snack or eat. <laughs> oh, okay. um, yeah, thanks for muting. Um, so for some statistics to support our future development, this is going to be around what facets people are using, particularly related to, if you think about those format facets at the top of Aspen, as well as the, um, the facets right below that that say which collection you're searching or whether you're searching available or not. Or not. We want some more information around how users are using those or how many users are using those before we make changes to facets at all. So we're gonna be gathering that data. Um, and then a stretch would be to actually start that discovery account redesign for the plans that I'm gonna show you. Um, so that's what, what you can look forward to next time. For e-commerce updates, uh, these are really hard to pin on a timeline because most of these are related to us interacting with another vendor. So it's how quickly do they get back to us? Do they have the APIs we need? So um, we'll just keep you updated on what's happening with these, but this is roughly our priority order for now. And it is also roughly based on how long people have been waiting for an integration. So uh, the integrations that we're gonna work on in this coming month are World Pay, World Pay from FIS, and then um, start an integration with Express Pay. Uh, a re another thing that um, was requested as far as e-commerce is a filter uh, to allow you to run a report between two dates, because now it's like either right before this date or after this date, and you can't kind of set a date range for that report. Uh, following that, uh, the next integrations we're gonna look at, so we are not starting these, um, unless everything in the other list gets blocked, then we might start some of these, um, is uh, an integration with ACI Worldwide, and an integration with AMS, which is Automated Merchant Services. Another request that we've had for e-commerce within Aspen is to add the owning library to the e-commerce report. So um, we'll be looking at doing that um, soon, but probably not this release. We've also had a number, a number of libraries ask about using Square. This one is a lower priority because 
as far as I am aware, no one actually is actively using Square. They're just curious about it. If you are actively using Square, uh, put in a ticket or email me to let me know and, and we'll see kind of what's happening there. I did enough to see that they have some APIs, we should be able to do it, but unless a library is actually actively using it, um, it's just gonna be a little bit lower priority than those that are being actively used for e-commerce. So that's where kind of those priorities came. The last thing that I promised I would talk about are um, updates to the My Account area of Aspen. Um, so as we, as you've seen with Lita, um, one thing we want is to make sure that the app and the web version of Aspen have similar experiences. We don't want you to be using the app and then feel like a completely different experience on the web. Um, so we are going to be looking at changes to my account in order to kind of give um, give the web version a little bit of an update, but also make sure that those two experiences are consistent. Uh, one of the things that we're going to use this as an opportunity to do is reduce the confusion between my account and the hamburger menu. The hamburger menu of those three lines. Right now, they're right next to each other. And I know other people are going to have the same experience I do where when they click on one, um, they forget which one to click on. They're like right next to each other. It's like, which, which is in which one? So we're going to try to clarify that a little bit. Um, and we're also going to try to reorganize and consolidate some of the features, some of the functionality under my account for better usability. And I have some mock-ups I'm gonna show you in a second uh, for what we're looking at. Another thing that we've noticed is that people have been asking about different themes or kind of, I'll say, call it hacking in a good way, um, Aspen to be able to look and act the way that they want. So one thing we've seen that lots of people have wanted um, are full width header images. So we want to, actually support those in Aspen so you don't have to kind of figure out how to do fancy tricks with CSS or repurpose a feature for a full width header that isn't really um, designed to do that. So we're going to be looking at supporting that. We talked about dark mode a little bit last time. Um, so we'd like to support dark mode, but just like it is in Lita, we don't want to make it mandatory. We don't want a library to have to say, okay, everybody has to use dark mode. We want to give patrons the choice to say, okay, I'm going to use it in dark mode or I'm not. Um, and then as we are making these changes with themes, we're not just gonna push changes out because that would, you know, lots of you have highly customized sites. We want to be able to provide a way for you to, um, either the patron to look at two at a time or maybe to say, okay, we're gonna push this test theme only to staff. So staff can use it, um, staff can play with it, we can test it. Um, and then later we'll make it available to patrons either as an alternate theme or maybe eventually probably as, as a main theme. Okay, so without further ado, I will go into uh, the redesign. Uh, I would like to, just a shout out to Kirsten here. In addition to being our amazing Lita app developer, she also does these mock-ups for us. Again, these are mock-ups. Um, and I'll show you a couple, a couple of different designs. And these are just things that we're thinking. The end result will not likely not look exactly like this. Um, just because it's in flux, but we wanted to give you an idea of what we're thinking. So what you're seeing right now is a full width header with an image up here, as well as a new bar with navigation at the top. Again, this is going to look a lot like an app in this, in this way. The hamburger menu is over here on the left. Um, we've talked about whether or not in the full screen mode this hamburger menu is even necessary. So we're talking about ways where you wouldn't even necessarily have to have this hamburger menu in full width. All of the links that you need are available in this menu bar. And then as the screen shrinks, then you would get the hamburger menu. But unless you wanted it, it's not necessary to have it here. Um, but again, that's kind of all different things that we're talking about and different options we're considering. Um, and up here, you have my account. Uh, so just pretty simple, you can click that. You see a similar drawer functionality. I know what Kirsten showed, you showed the drawer coming out on the left. We're, we're deciding, we'll, we'll make a consistent decision whether it's the left or the right for this drawer to come out uh, and see just the most important information to the patron right here. They can get into their account. Um, we have fine information, overdue, ready for pickup. Um, yeah, so the most important information, of course, you can click on your library card. And this would be a little bit of the redesigned library card page. Uh, we're still playing with where all of the settings will live in each of these areas. Um, so we're still mapping all of that, figuring out the most important things to be over here kind of in the side. Um, but the general idea is to hide the things that aren't used as often. I don't want to say hide, like bury a little bit, put it more in a settings like you would see in another website where it's, you have to dig a little bit to get to those unused settings, but make the things that you use right away really prominent. 
this is also um, a little bit of a dark mode. Um, so you can see with when we had the drawer open, this is um, darker right up here. Also notice that that big header image went away. Uh, we'll talk about maybe do we, if we have those big images, do we want them on every page? It certainly makes sense on the home page, certainly makes sense on the web builder page, but for a search page, maybe it's just an image that people have to scroll past every time. So um, whether or not that image is, needs to be everywhere will be something that we'll talk about. That image will also be optional. So you won't have to do an image like that. So we did a quick mock-up of one without the image. So it's gonna be fine without the image if you don't feel like you want one of those at the top of your screen. Um, this is also a little bit more of a light mode so you can see how that um, how it looks without the dark mode over here. Uh, otherwise, it's pretty much the same. And then last, we just wanted to say, hey, not everyone's gonna have the app. How is this going to work on a mobile site for those that don't download the app? So we are definitely looking at, at that. Um, and you can see here, same with the light mode. Um, you can go into my account. And then we have this dashboard here at the top that where's the sidebar, um, that little left sidebar that was in my account before. So I will pause to check the chat and see if there are any questions or um, any any thoughts about anything that I've shared? I know I just word spewed a whole bunch at you. I think everyone is just in awed silence at the amazingness that they're seeing right now. It looks um, great. Stara, <laughs> <laughs> it's so quiet. I just wanted to break the silence. It looks wonderful. And yeah, I, that was something we'd had, sort of had done on our, our low on our priority list. Like, yeah, I feel like there's like the accounts is like there's a lot of stuff there. So this is like very nice and streamlined. And I think will help people find things faster. I see a question from Amanda that says, "Do you have a rough timeline for the my account redesign?" Um, and the answer is kind of. Soonish. We're working on the design right now. It was a stretch goal to start it, um, to start it in this coming release. I'm not sure that we'll get there. And some of the things we want to figure out ahead are um, maybe how to switch between those themes so that we need we need to let you kind of turn the themes on and off first before we give you all of this. So there's just a little bit of pre-work to do, but we wanted to give you a vision of where we're going. Well, we can always do more questions at the end. Um, and the last slide I think is for our next agenda item. Morgan, did you want the screen or um, do you wanna just keep sharing mine? Yeah, you can just keep sharing yours, that's fine. Yeah. So um, we have a discussion topic to talk about um, language. So different languages for titles um, within group works. So, um, I'll kind of let Jordan explain a little more um, about what we've been talking about. Sure. Um, so we've been getting tickets back and forth between kind of what to do with language um, and different people have had different opinions on this. A quick refresher on what we do now when we have something like Harry Potter in multiple languages, um, if the titles match and the authors match, then they will group together. If they don't match, then they won't group together, which is um, an inconsistent experience. So we're talking about kind of what we wanna do as a group, whether we think those, basically, do we wanna make a change to where languages don't group anymore? Um, so we have kind of two different outlines up here. Um, if we wanted to group different languages together, we don't have the metadata to be able to do that. So we, we, we don't necessarily know if they have different titles that they're the same actual group. So that's manual work on the library side. We could work towards ways to share that information. So if one library grouped them, then other libraries could benefit from that, but it would be a manual process because we don't have the metadata. Um, like we said, we can see all those translations of a title together, which is, you know, good um, to know if you search for Harry Potter, what the languages that are in, that we have it in right away. Um, if we group different languages together, we have to prefer the metadata of a language. So when we're looking at the title, 
if it's grouping the English and the Spanish, we have to choose what to show as the title. So it's kind of saying, well, English is more important than Spanish, so we're going to show that title. Do we want to do that? Also, when we group all of that together, we have more metadata to pull from in a single grouped work. So if you think about maybe your English records are more thorough than your language, than your Spanish language records, if we separate those, then it might make the Spanish ones harder to find, but it also might be more accurate because it, again, it depends, it completely depends on your cataloging and what subject headings you use. Do you're using English subject headings to describe your Spanish titles? Um, that's just a consideration there. If we separate them, which is what the change, so the right-hand column is the change, um, this would be more consistent. So we would say, okay, these really are different groups or different works. Um, the, the words, I always think like, are the words the same? That's the rule, should they be the same work in my head? The words, even if they mean things the same thing in different languages, they really are different. Um, but we could also be consistent. So languages never group together or shouldn't ever group together. Uh, the title and the description can be provided in the primary language of the material. So the title for the Spanish version would be in Spanish. Um, one, I don't wanna call it a bug, it's just what we can do, but one of the facet requests we've had is the ability to say, I want to see audiobooks in Spanish. And that's been really difficult for us when they're all part of the same grouped work. Because if you have a Spanish print title and an audiobook English title, that will come up as a result of limiting those facets because both Spanish and audiobook are there, even though what the user is actually looking for, the audiobook in Spanish is not there. Um, so we would that would fix that issue. Um, but an issue it might create is that the content enrichment for the non-English titles might not be as complete as it is for the English titles. Okay. And then we'll we'll leave the question in the box for a little bit later. Um, yeah, so what? who has opinions on this? Can I speak it up first? I'm Scott Brandwine from the SWAN Consortium. And it's just more of a, a comment um, you were mentioning with the grouping option that you don't have the metadata to do it. And I don't know if that's necessarily true, depending on sort of the catalog you're working with and the standards that are being used. Um, we're pretty good about using uniform titles for our translations. Um, and so, if you were to pull from that 240, you know, the presence of the subfield L with the language in it um, might be something to draw on if we wanted to automate the grouping process. I, I don't think it's impossible. So I just wanted to sort of say that to start. Yeah, I think you're right. And we do use uniform title right now, um, but not, I wouldn't, we wouldn't want to, if you had uniform title, it would work. If you didn't, I'm not sure what else we would pull on, but right. think, or pull And on, it's also a massive you. different way of looking at it. So I, yeah, it's something that I've been wary about even suggesting. Do you want to say something, Scott, about how SWAN has handled this um, so far, just in your history? Because I know you've spent some time thinking about it and working on it. <laughs> Not a lot. I can't. I can't. I, I, we, we've mentioned it a couple of times. I've gotten some like off the cuff, you know, um, uh, uh, opinions. Um, we're pretty split in our membership. There's concern about what you're saying with um, things getting kind of hidden. Um, there's also, I mean, you already sort of addressed the, the title uh, prior, uh, prioritization, I guess, based on catalog language or whatever you're using. Um, and that's one of the main concerns. I feel like if that piece is in place, then we might drift towards the side of grouping. Um, but that's sort of speculation at this point until I get like a more formal talk going with our membership. I'm in a way in. And I don't mean to say the opposite. It's not really the opposite. But I know another thing that's come up, and I think in, in the community and certainly our membership is um, selecting, like say you select to view the Aspen catalog in Spanish, having those results um, for Spanish language titles, you know, float to the top in terms of relevancy. And I don't know if separating would make that easier than grouping. Um, and alternately, like a concern I would have is, you know, would the relevancy of like a single single Spanish or Polish language title kind of be so far below and like search results, like how would that kind of affect the relevancy of those titles being searchable? That, 
this Keisha at Arlington. That's kind of an awesome concept because I was just thinking, I was thinking about that in relation to the Spanish because we, we have the Spanish catalog up and the idea that you can't toggle to say, I don't want to see the things that are in, in English because you have to, therefore, even in the Spanish catalog, when it's grouped together, you still have to go find the, the, um, the Spanish version, you know, like, and so if it kind of, if you were able to separate that or even on a better note, change the relevancy so that if you switch it to the Spanish catalog, that it automatically puts preference on the Spanish items, that would be even greater because like that's what you're looking for most likely. Um, but that said, yeah, we don't group here. We ungroup purposely just so that it makes it clearer to people that we do have the content because, because it's a smaller portion of what we have. It, having it grouped with something makes it even less likely for you to find it. Whereas if it's its own title and it's sitting up there, then you can see it, but that's just me. I would say <clears throat> I lean a little more towards having the items in another language be not part of a grouped work um, because I, and let's say that Spanish in this case, um, I want all the Spanishness of that item to display. Uh, also, I think it's really important to be able to facet accurately to say, I just want Spanish stuff or German or whatever. Um, and so whatever, whatever gets us to that goal, I, I, you know, I lean a little more towards that, but those are my thoughts. Mike, for me, um, uh, I think I agree as well um, in terms of uh, what I want to say. Separating, I actually just purposely set, separated something out um, that was, uh, and the reason for that was I think our Libby Spanish language copy of an audiobook was, yeah, you know, Aspen was selecting, like there's only one piece of e content that was Spanish language, but you know, Libby was uh, rather Aspen was selecting that. So I separated the two out, which works real well, is able to change the, the title of the group work. But then, you know, the, the prioritization and the search results kind of um, bumped down. So I, I would think that maybe if there was a way to sort of still kind of have those two things linked, that the two separate group works in the sense that, you know, if Aspen could intelligently, intelligently realize they're somehow related and bump the, um, you know, the, the, the priority of that separated work, you know, you might have 30 copies of something or 30 different titles of something in English and one in Spanish, it, it should still maybe be a factor. Uh, Another thing to consider is when you're talking about like capturing the Spanish and so that all this enhancement stuff, the things that are coming through synthetics and all of that mm -hmm. novelist information, that would definitely be something we'd want to keep in mind and whether we could prioritize that or by language or not would tip the scales a bit. I think that linkage between like the English and the Spanish versions, I, I, I don't, I don't feel so much inclined that that necessarily needs to happen. And the reason why I say that is because typically, typically you're going to have someone who's more comfortable in the other language, like Spanish, uh, and they're going to be searching in Spanish. And so the fact that the English title is linked to the Spanish title in some vague way is it doesn't really matter because you're not going to get the English title and vice versa. If you're searching in English, the Spanish title is going to be further down the list because you were after English. So, so in my mind, um, I don't, I don't necessarily see that those things need to be integrated so much, even though they're separate. Mark, can you comment on um, what several people have brought up about relevancy and maybe an option to adjust relevancy based on the language yeah. that's being searched? Can I actually share yes. the turn for a minute? Yeah. 
So, uh, I'm just going to go to Arlington's because I think he was the first one to mention it. Um, so, we do actually, let me get rid of all of my extra screens here. Um, in Aspen, it is kind of hidden, but if I do a search, so if I say, hey, I actually want to, I'm not doing the toggle here just for demonstration. If I want to display the catalog in Spanish instead of English, there is another drop down here for saying, do you want to prefer, this should say Spanish, it would say it as soon as I Do I, this says, do I want to prefer languages in Spanish? Um, and I can either say, yeah, I do want to prefer my Spanish materials or only show the Spanish materials. Um, so if I do say show that above other materials and I search for, um, I'm gonna uh, search in English. You do realize that that drop down was in English, right? Yeah, it needs to, it's a <laughs> translation. <laughs> so that needs to be translated. I agree. Um, if I search, why did cat not work? Oh, this may have broken. I may have to fix this. Um, if I say only show preferred, let's just search, do a blank search. Okay, we need to fix that. Um, that has worked previously. Um, so I will be fixing that in one moment. Um, so yeah, so the idea is that it's there. I do wonder if we want to, as we're talking through the search redesign, um, we could make those options more obvious. Um, so if you're in Spanish, make it really easy to say, hey, preferred Spanish materials, which would then give all of those an extra boost um, versus the English materials if they're separated out. Um, what did people think about that idea? Because um, there is definitely a dis discrepancy between number of copies that each library owns. I think it's an excellent idea. Mark, another question going back to uniform title. If two works had the same uniform title in different languages, would it be possible within, let's say, the English version of the grouped work to say something like, this title is also available in Spanish with a link to that, if the uniform title is matched? We maybe. Um, so basically do a, a reverse search to say, so that we do index the uniform title. So if somebody searched it in English, they would see the Spanish, even if the Spanish title was shown by default. Um, so the relevancy would still be there. We would need to, um, We could probably do it to where if the uniform title was filled out um, and you were looking at the English version, you could see all of the other versions. Um, yeah. Would that, that be a good cool. kind of compromise between the two? Don't group them because they're different, but let people know that it's available some in some other language. We can also give relatively high rate um, waiting to that alternate title as well. So, it's hard for me to like answer these questions definitively. I don't know if this is a lot to ask, but I would love to see like a mock up or two that we could just compare side by side, show to our membership, and see what people think. I think we could. Yeah, I think that's a, a great idea because um, <clears throat> I'm not really the, you know, I don't work in a library because I'm the systems librarian for the consortium. So I don't have that front desk experience of the difficulties that people who are not native English speakers 
have with the catalog. So being able to, to not, you know, otherwise I have to, with words, like wave my hands and say, what if this, this, and this, but to be able to, you know, send out something and say, how does this help or hinder you in your job when you're dealing with, uh, in our case, particularly Spanish speakers? I think we could do that. And we're trying to do a little bit more of that just in general with getting designs to you sooner when we have, when we're able to. So yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. And I'm wondering if this would be a good conversation topic too for we have the, um, Tara, this is for, for you for the community meeting just to discuss. Um, we can kind of introduce it here and you could take it away and talk about it more. I don't know that we would have the mock-ups ready for that meeting that you have on the 15th. Um, so that's another option to give everyone some time to process and think and talk about the relevant people or talk to the relevant people at their um, organizations. I'll add it to our agenda. Yeah, not a decision we need to make today, just a beginning of a conversation. And it sounds like for us, maybe the next steps are uh, to do those mock-ups um, and then for everyone else here to kind of think about think about what they want. I'll add one more thing, actually, just in defense of having some sort of linkage between, um, uh, you know, mul multiple group works. Uh, I think there are, there might be some cases where if you're relying too heavily on the Aspen being viewed in a certain language, and there's certainly bilingual people who, you know, may slightly prefer reading in Spanish, but, um, you know, might take an English copy of something, but also in terms of the in-house use, um, a reference person assisting a Spanish language speaker in finding something, um, if you need to turn the whole cat, you know, if you need to turn, if you need to have Aspen displaying in Spanish for that to work easily, then that makes it difficult for the staff member. It's sort of the point there I want to make. Um, I'll counter your point oh, <laughs> with, awesome. with uh, that if the facet that says limit to only Spanish titles actually worked, then there's no need for to, you know, to, there's no need to, to say, oh, you have to switch to Sp Spanish in order to get the relevant, necessary relevancy Fair to enough. help the person. Yeah. And, and then I will also counter it by saying that if the Spanish, like if I was helping someone in Spanish find a title, then that's cool. But then if I wanted to show them that they could also do this at home and it worked right, then I could show it to them without having to explain why it broke. Because like, that's the biggest thing. Like, I can't do that. If you could tell me, like, I might be able to show you, okay, this works on your side and it worked perfectly, but when it breaks or it doesn't work right, there's no way. I'm going to be able to explain it in Spanish as to why, but I can give you a, a quick look. Oh, this exists, and you could have done the same thing, and this brought up the title in Spanish for you correctly because it preferred it because I was on the Spanish catalog. You know, you get what I'm saying? So that would be great if that could work. And, you know, if that could work, that would be awesome, but I also know that's a lot of work. But yeah, that's what the best of all words would be. In English, I could find it easily. And in Spanish, I could get it to work properly, even though I don't understand a lot of Spanish myself. Thank you, everyone, for your comments. Um, it's been really, really useful. Um, and I look forward to continuing the conversation and hearing hearing what you hear back from your libraries. So thanks. These are, this is an amazing discussion. So thank you so much. Um, and thank you, Jordan, for, for leading the discussion too. I realized I was like, I don't know enough of, about how this works yet. <laughs> so you have all the right words for this. Um, so that is all we have for the agenda today, and um, we do have a few minutes left, so are there any last minute comments or questions before we wrap up for this month? I'll just give a plug for the um, Aspen community meeting that's March 15th, and I'll 
post the um, agenda in the chat if you have anything to add. Thanks, Tara. Yeah, definitely, if you aren't already going to the community meetings, um, definitely consider attending because those meetings are for you to drive discussions and um, bring your feedback and ideas to us and to share them out with the greater group. So, okay. Well, if there's nothing else, I'd say we can just wrap this up for the month. <laughs> awesome. Great meeting everyone. This is this was really exciting and good discussion. So thank you so much. Um, we will see you next time and probably talk to you in tickets and see you in meetings and all that stuff. <laughs>